Air France, the world's farthest reaching airline, makes it possible for the traveler or tourist of today to visit comfortably and speedily all the world. The worldwide French air service offers you a chance to visit in a few hours the far away and exotic lands of the globe. One of these lands so easy to reach now by many services of Air France is North Africa, where the East meets the West and together they offer the tourist who has a few weeks to spare the most exotic travel experience to be had. Tunisia is the first country we visit on our Air France picture tour of North Africa. The modern airport of the city of Tunis welcomes travelers from everywhere. Many Muslims now make their pilgrimage to Mecca part way by air. Returning pilgrims from the holy city are warmly greeted by their families and friends at Tunis. While our plane is refueled and prepared to continue on its regular scheduled flight, we slip away for our trip through a strange and interesting oriental land. In Tunis, we find, to our surprise, that there is a beautiful modern French city adjoining the old oriental one. The occidental cities of North Africa make travel there the pleasure it is, for in them are found the conveniences and living comforts we are used to. We like traveling in strange places and seeing how other people of the world live, but it is nice and important to have fine hotels to stop at along the way. The center of modern Tunis is the broad, tree-lined avenue Jules Ferry, named for the great French statesman who brought about the occupation of Tunisia. From the Kasbah Square, we make our way into the Rue de la Kasbah and the native city of narrow streets and crooked lanes. Above us rise minaret after minaret, for we have crossed the threshold of Islam. Part of the walls and some of the gates of old Tunis still stand. In this area, once completely surrounded by walls, you catch glimpses of oriental life that has changed little in the passing centuries. When Tunis was a stronghold for Mediterranean pirates, few foreigners ever passed in freedom along these streets. But today in Tunis under France, you can wander anywhere through the fabulous souks and bazaars. The narrow, congested streets of the souks are of great interest to tourists, especially to those who want to shop for articles of the East. Much of Tunis was built with the stones from the ruins of Carthage, which stood 10 miles away on the shore of the Mediterranean. One of your days will be spent visiting the remains of the city that was founded by the Phoenicians nearly 3,000 years ago. So many historic memories are connected with this once proud mistress of the Mediterranean. The Punic Wars, the destruction of Carthage by Scipio, the new colony under Julius Caesar, the new city under Augustus Caesar, the capital of the Vandal Empire, then a quarry for the building of Arab mosques and cities, and an outpost of Christianity. Within sight of the hill where St. Louis died of plague on his last crusade, the American flag flies over the graves of so many who lost their lives during the Second World War. Nearby, the dead of France sleep, and not so very far away, the Germans. When you tour North Africa, you will find many remains of the Romans, for in their days, North Africa was the granary of the empire, and the climate made it a favorite place to live. At Duga, you will see Punic and Roman ruins that are the most important of North Africa. The amphitheater of El Gem, the fifth in size of Roman amphitheaters, is the grandest Roman structure in Barbary. For 1,200 years, it remained intact. But in the 17th century, it was partly blown up to stop its use as a fortress and refuge by rebels. It is still a splendid monument of past glories. One of the most interesting cities the Air France tourists will visit in Tunisia is Kairouan, founded in the year 671 by the city Okbar, 
the Arab conqueror of North Africa. For centuries, Kairouan was one of the four holy cities of the Mohammedan world, and no unbeliever could ever enter or even approach it. Today, it is accessible to everyone, and the tourists who visit it find that a trip to Kairouan is like going back a thousand years to wander in a city of the Arabian Nights. The Mosque of the Barber, the second sanctuary of Kairouan, which is visited by every tourist, is dedicated to the traditional friend and barber of the Prophet. Its courts are adorned with Byzantine columns, its walls decorated with beautifully preserved ancient tiles. The Mosque of the Saba, with its five domes, is one of Kairouan's newest. One of the oldest in the world is the Grand Mosque of Sidi Okba. After Mecca, Medina, and the Dome of the Rock, the greatest sanctuary of Islam. Much of the material that went into the building of this ancient Mohammedan sanctuary came from the more ancient ruins of Carthage. Next on our Air France picture tour, we visit the old walled town of Sfax, the second largest city and the second largest seaport of Tunisia. Air France, in presenting this picture tour, is showing you brief glimpses of many of the sights that await you when you make a flight to North Africa. We cannot dwell long on any one subject, for we want you to see as much as possible and to visit as many spots as our half-hour picture tour permits. When you make your flight to North Africa, you will find that your days there will be as full of interest as this screen is of passing scenes. Sfax, like Tunis, has its native city and its French one. You will like them both. Its pleasant winter climate makes Sfax a popular stopping place for travelers. Your choice of several fine hotels will assure you of a comfortable and pleasant stay. One of the interesting sights of Sfax is the sponge anchorage and the docks where the fleet of small boats tie up to unload their cargoes. Sponging is one of the important industries of Sfax. And many of the sponges used in the world today have been brought up from the Gulf of Gabez by the sponge fishermen of Sfax. In shallow water, the fisherman peers through a glass bottom bucket and hooks the sponges with a long pronged pole. In deep water, they would have to dive for them. Spices and peppers are important products for many merchants of North Africa. And the weekly pepper market at Nabel is a most interesting sight. As you tour North Africa, you will find that French cooking predominates everywhere. But you will no doubt enjoy many tasty native dishes. Couscous, highly seasoned with spices and these hot peppers, is the principal dish of the people of North Africa. The pepper market of Nabel is held on Fridays. That day is also the weekly general market, and all manner of produce and wares are spread out along the road. Nabel pottery, modeled after Roman and Punic design, is famed throughout Tunisia. Your color camera will find plenty of subjects when you tour North Africa. You'll have a chance to get some good close-up shots of camels. For Nabel also has its weekly camel market. As you travel through Tunisia, you will often meet herds of camels, donkeys, 
goats and sheep. These are the principal domestic animals of the country. It seems strange to us that camels and cattle should be used for plowing. Most of the loads of the Tunisians are carried by donkeys. In our touring, we see many veiled women in Tunisia. These are part of a wedding procession. We do not see the bride, for she is hidden by silk coverings on the camel's back. Gunplay, reminiscent of ancient times, enlivens the procession. There are many unusual things to be seen in Tunisia. Before us is the town of Matmata. It does not look like a town, for we do not see any dwellings. They are here, though, for the people are troglodytes and their homes are dug deep in the earth. Another strange town is Medinine. Here the inhabitants live in the ancient storehouses of the Berber League. They are curious structures made up of single dwellings built one upon another. Some of them reach a height of five stories. Tunis Air, a subsidiary of Air France, now makes it possible to visit the island of Gerba which Homer called the Island of Lotus Eaters. Gerber's unique snow white mosques contribute to the beauty of one of the most attractive and prosperous regions of Tunisia. The inhabitants are mostly Berbers who have retained their old language and customs. Until Tunis Air started its service to Gerber, few strangers ever visited the island. And because of its isolation, it has changed little in the passing centuries. Dyeing and weaving are the most important industries of the island. Gerba wool is prized throughout Tunisia for its strength, quality, and the fastness of its color. Gerba is one of the most fertile regions of Tunisia. There are no streams on the island. All water comes from wells. During the dry season, the land must be irrigated, and camels still draw water from the deep wells in the same way it has been drawn for thousands of years. The women of Gerba wear straw hats. In North Africa, Gerba is the only place where you will find hats a part of a native woman's attire. The manufacturing of pottery has been carried on in Gerba since ancient times and the method of working the clay has never changed. There are very few vehicles on the island. The natives' principal means of getting about is on mule or donkey back. The synagogue of Hara Serira, where, according to tradition, one of the tables of the law of Moses was found. For thousands of years, a Jewish community has existed on Gerba, and it has been a place of pilgrimage. The Jews earn their livelihood mostly as artisans. This girl is cutting rawhide. These narrow strips are used to make sieves. Jewish girls receive instruction early in sewing and handicrafts. Embroidery, done by the Jewish women of Gerba, is among the finest in the world. All over Tunisia, you will find girls busy with handicrafts of all kinds. Many of them are engaged in rug weaving, and the rugs and carpets they make are of excellent quality. The government provides art centers and schools for the instruction of the young girls and encourages the continuation of the old methods of working so as to preserve the arts and crafts of the past.
Southern Tunisia adjoins the Sahara, and there are several oases which the Air France tourists can visit. Good modern hotels are available in them, and a stay in an oasis where you can see how the people of the desert live and go about their daily tasks can be one of your most memorable experiences on an Air France flight to North Africa. Many fruits and vegetables grow in the oasis, but dates are the principal product. They are carefully gathered and graded to be shipped abroad. Dates from the oasis of Tozur in southern Tunisia are among the finest that are grown. We have now come to the end of our brief picture tour in Tunisia. If we had to travel as the Bedouins do, it would take us years to make the same journey we are making in this film. But Air France serves all North Africa, and it is only a few hours' flight to the next high spot of our tour. You are now in Algiers, the great French city that has grown up on the hills overlooking the bay that was once the anchorage of the Barbary pirates. The fine modern city has completely surrounded the old Arab one. You will live in the French city, but you will also wander about in the old one, which not so many years ago was the stronghold of the worst sea raiders that ever existed. You can spend many interesting and pleasant days in Algiers, for it has a mild climate like the Riviera of southern France, and the life in both the native city and the big modern French one has much to offer the tourist in the way of amusement and interest. In this picture tour, we are giving you only glimpses of what awaits you when you make your Air France flight to North Africa. The Casbah Quarter rising on the side of the hill was the main portion of old Algiers and it has remained almost unaltered since the days when pirating was the business of the inhabitants. The life of the people of the Casbah has changed but its narrow crooked streets, its many windowless walls, its whitewashed houses with jutting upper stories and its vaulted passageways still give it the air of impenetrable mystery. Modern Algiers is in complete contrast to the Casbah Quarter. It is like a great European city with fine hotels and all the things that are needed to make your visit a pleasant one. Fine theaters, attractive public buildings, beautiful parks all contribute to the appearance of Algiers. This great building of steel and glass is one of the offices for the administration of Algeria, the vast province that stretches beyond the Atlas Mountains and across the Sahara Desert to equatorial Africa, a province that is a part of the Republic of France. On this picture tour of North Africa, we make only one stop in Algeria, although Air France planes cover the country and there is much to see. During the time that remains in our film, we want to show you Morocco, the land that may prove to be the most interesting country of your flight to North Africa. Air France, the magic doorway to the world, one carrier service to 75 countries on six continents, the finest and fastest air service on the world's largest network of unduplicated route miles. Your first stop in Morocco is at a city you have all heard about. Until 1912, Casablanca was only a small native town, but since then, under French administration, it has grown rapidly and has become one of the most important cities of all Africa. It has been beautifully planned and laid out, and it has a climate that is pleasant the year round. Skyscrapers are going up, and they give the city the appearance of a growing American one. 
Buildings of Moorish design add to its attractiveness. Modern architecture fits well in Casablanca. Air France serves the whole world. Air Atlas flies the services within Morocco. The government buildings of Casablanca are constructed in Moorish style. They combine beauty with utility and are in keeping with the traditional art of the Moroccans. Modern Morocco is moving ahead and from appearances, the European bicycle seems to be helping it along. To the foothills of the snow-capped Atlas Mountains, your Air Atlas plane takes you to Marrakesh. Its walls are the longest of any city in the world. Within them, there exists today an almost unchanged city of the Middle Ages. The big square, Jamal Fana, during the day is a marketplace, but in late afternoon and at night, it will be crowded with entertainers of all kinds. The Kutubia Tower, the landmark of Marrakesh, was built in the 12th century. Near the tower is the date market, a crowded place, for dates are staple food products for the Moroccans. Olives furnish the principal oil for cooking. They are still pressed as in ancient times. Red peppers are dried in the sun. They give the flavor and sharpness to Moroccan dishes. The bazaars of Marrakesh are beyond this gateway. In these partly covered streets, you will find the shops catering to the traveler who wants the exotic wares of old and modern Morocco. Water carriers still supply the drinking water to the inhabitants of the native city. We return to the great square in late afternoon to watch the mountebanks, the dancers, storytellers, snake charmers and other performers entertain the crowds in the same ways they have been entertained for centuries. The Mamounia Hotel is one reason why Air France touring in North Africa is so comfortable. The superb hotel, situated in a magnificent Moorish garden, is only one of many splendid hotels that the tourist has to choose from on his vacation flight to North Africa. The garden is a very pleasant place to relax in between sightseeing trips. A few hours flight to the north is the imperial city of Meknes, which through the ages has been the scene of more strife than any other place in Morocco. Its walls and magnificent gates, begun in the early 12th century, are splendid reminders of its past glory. Not all glory, though, for Meknes was also the chief place of detention for Christian captives, and for 150 years, these walls confined many thousands of religious prisoners. About 20 miles from Meknes is the holy city of Boulay Idris. The town of white houses tightly crowded together on the top of a hill contains the sanctuary of the most venerated saint of all Morocco. Moulay Idris, descendant of the prophet and founder of the first Arab dynasty that reigned over the country. The town is a completely Muslim one, though a Yankee trader has added something new to the Mohammedan's diet. After you have visited Moulay Idris, you will walk through the ruins of the ancient Roman city of Volubilis. 
the excavations, which were begun only in 1916, have brought to life many treasures of the Roman civilization that flourished here nearly 2,000 years ago. The work has only scratched the surface, but it has already uncovered some of the most perfectly preserved mosaic pavements ever discovered. The northern capital of Morocco is Fez. It is situated in the hills at the point of intersection of the Imperial High Road that runs across Morocco from east to west and the main track of the caravans that used to ply between the Mediterranean and the Sahara. Its situation, its historical and religious importance and the wealth of its population made it the political and economical center of the Sharifian Empire. No other city in the Muslim world can approach it in interest and it will be one of the high spots of your Air France trip to North Africa. Let us wander about beyond the gate through the incline narrow streets and imagine ourselves back in the distant past. Occasionally, a tree still grows in old Fez. Some streets have lattice coverings as protection against summer sun. They cast strange patterns on the passers-by. Moroccans are excellent craftsmen. Their leather is world famous, and you will certainly want to include in your purchases some of the attractive gold and leather articles that are so beautifully made in old Fez. <laughs> Copper and brass work will be sure to tempt you also. The potter still works as in ancient times. Moroccan pottery is very colorful and it is painted by hand. No two designs are alike. As you wander through Fez, you will come upon many beautiful old fountains, lovely carved doorways and other gems of Moorish architecture. On gala occasions, Fez is decked with silken banners, portraits of the Sultan and crimson flags of the country. Then one also sees many veiled women who have left the seclusion of their homes to enjoy the occasion. On the anniversary of Throne Day, all Moroccans forget their labors for the day and join in the spirit of the holiday that prevails throughout the land. picture tour, we have one more stop to make in Morocco, Rabat, capital of the French protectorate. The landmark of Rabat is the Hassan Tower, once the minaret of an ancient mosque. From its top, you have a superb view of both the new and the old cities. When you are in Rabat, you will visit the old Kasbah, surrounded by walls and entered through this magnificent gate. In our picture tour, only a little time is left, and we want you to have a few glimpses of the new French city. The French, in laying out their new cities in Morocco, place them away from the old native ones, and so in your travels, you have the opportunity to enjoy all the comforts of Western civilization. Modern buildings, hotels, churches, fine residences make modern Rabat a most attractive city to live in. Rabat is the seat of government of the Sultan of Morocco, and here he has his administrative department and his newest palace. The state entrance of the palace is a superb doorway of pure Moroccan design.
The informal entrance to the palace is through this series of arch gateways. Nearby is a small mosque, and every Friday, the Sultan, accompanied by his black guard and palace attendants, rides in ceremonial procession for midday prayers. It has been our pleasure to present for your entertainment and information another motion picture tour by Air France. We have shown you only a few of the many interesting areas of North Africa that you can now visit comfortably and quickly. Air France planes fly regularly to every continent, their worldwide services taking you almost everywhere. When you think of an exotic vacation, remember that a new and fascinating experience awaits you when you make an Air France flight to North Africa.